We deleted you. All right, chat, this is going to get crazy. So, chat, if you guys missed it, you guys can always catch up on the lore through my YouTube channel. I have two YouTube videos up right now. Um, the first one is for Kyle's trilogy, and then the second one is for Sam's story. This is going to be uh, Corrupted Data 1, 2. Here we go, chat. This is going to get crazy. It's going to get cray-cray, chat. Here we go. Here we go, chat. I love this world. The land, the trees, the lakes, the mountains, all so rich and pure. It put okay. me at ease, but unfortunately, oh, I didn't turn on there was else. always one thing that hindered me from go. truly enjoying it. The people. Billions of people chopping the trees down, throwing their trash in the lakes, and replacing the land with their air-polluting cities. When I was younger, I would stare out the window and I would think to myself, This is my world. It felt like it Austin. was all made for me. And that all these entitled businessmen, lawmakers, and presidents had Austin is the name of the corrupted It would make me so angry that sometimes I'd clench my fists while in public. I wanted to punch the faces of everyone around me for bringing all this bullshit into my world. It wasn't fair. This guy but seems kind of crazy. Nobody understood how I felt. I, I don't. was ostracized for feeling this way. Yep. Punished for feeling this way and Should mocked be. for feeling this way. I never had a single friend in my life. I remember in fourth grade, I was yelled at by the teacher to get out of her classroom. Ooh. I can't remember what it was I did to piss her off, but that wasn't important to me. What was important to me was the fact that she said her classroom, but in actuality, it was her classroom on my land. So I stood up from my desk and shouted, it's your classroom on my land because this is my world. The entire class laughed and- Bruh. Bruh. Bruh, who does that? Who does that shit? That's, that's like the mentality that, like, I don't know. I was always taught that, like, there's parents that will, like, raise their kids to be the center of the world. You know, like, bruh. And the teacher gave me an angry look. I stormed Why out do of all the, the characters get bullied? That wasn't the only thing, though. Valid, valid, ob valid observation. Ob I can't talk. My parents sent me from therapist observation. To therapist. All of which were trying to change the way I thought about this world. Sure. I was constantly labeled as a sociopath, and I was alienated socially. I was so pissed off. I just wished every other human would just drop dead so I could oh. live peacefully. Okay, chat, here's my issue, right? So, at the end of the last episode, or last section we watched, Adelaide passes away, and that entire time, Adelaide did nothing wrong whatsoever. And I loved Adelaide. And everyone's like, oh my god, Mason, just wait until the next part. You're gonna hate Adelaide. Austin is the best guy. And he opens up with, this is my world. And I hate everyone. And I wish everyone would die. And Adelaide just in an unfortunate situation. I don't understand how, what kind of plot twist would make me turn this around. Everyone's like, oh my god. Austin is so good. Oh my gosh. However, there was one thing the other people made that I can say I was somewhat thankful for. Video games. Let's go! He's a game. I, I take it all back. He's a gamer. He's a gamer, Chad. I take it all back. We love a gamer. We love a gamer. I take it all back. I remember it was the year 1987 on the day of my seventh birthday. Oh. I received a Nintendo Entertainment System, or NES for short. So he's an old fart. I enjoyed playing the games on that system, so I got the SNES when it came out in 1990. Brad. And then the Nintendo 64 in 1996, and Brad. so on. It was with these systems that I realized what I wanted to do for the remainder of my life. Create video games. Ooh. I could create a video game and finally get the respect that I deserved. No teachers telling me what I can and can't do in my world, and no doctors labeling me as a sociopath. Sure. As I grew older, I learned what the development of a video game would require. Lots coding. of coding, lots of design, <laughs> good gameplay, a decent plot, and among other things. My first concept for a game was called Reclamation. The plot revolved around a king who had to reclaim his kingdom from the citizens who've taken over it against his wishes. He'd have to traverse through the land, fighting the citizens and punishing them for their crimes. Kind of like Super Mario Bros. I started to practice...
It's about this king who gets his land stolen from him, and he has to destroy all the citizens and get it back, just like Mario. Coding in 1997. I mainly worked with C++, and I got better and better until I was able to create a very rough prototype of Reclamation. I never was able to go past that one prototype, though, as I wasn't good at creating art for the game, and I wasn't able to find anybody willing to help me. Since I couldn't finish the game by myself, I decided that instead of trying to finish the game alone, I would work for a company that makes games instead. So in the fall of 2003, five years after I finished high school, I officially started my first year of college at the DigiPen Institute of Technology at Redmond, Washington. DigiPen? Is that a thing? Is DigiPen a real place? DigiPen Institute of Technology, it's real, bro. Bruh. All right, yeah, okay. Okay, this is the first, okay. Yeah. Yeah, that. <laughs> that seems about right. That. That. Yeah, that's that seems that's se that that track. That was where I pursued a bachelor's and a master's degree in programming and computer science. Anyways, I had always been a grade A student. School had always been easy for me, and it became the same case with college. It resulted in me in having a lot of free time. Meanwhile, for what I've seen, other people would hang out with their friends or focus on hobbies in their free time. Right. Honestly, it's such a waste of time. I preferred to spend my free time studying. I'd study a lot about the subjects I saw in my classes. Why is my fa why am I glowing? Why am I glowing right now? Oh, I just I just stopped glowing. Okay, cool. I saw a lot of subjects apart from the usual coding and development courses. I also studied science, math, etc. In one of my science you courses, were going to heaven, Mason. and they used to assign a ton of homework. <laughs> one day I was. <laughs> Hold on. I got you, chat. I got you, chat. One second. I got you. in my dorm room doing some of that homework about advanced electricity uses. Then I got a little stuck at one of the questions, so I got on my computer to try to figure out the answer. Then, while I was browsing the web, I stumbled across something that caught my eye. Ooh. It was a procedure called electroshock therapy, or ECT for short. Uh-oh. The procedure uh -oh. was used on people who had mental health conditions. In short, it was used on people who didn't require such harsh procedures. It worked by running electric currents directly into the brain. When it was used by people who experienced it and well-trained, it could change lives for the better. But if it was misused, it had some severe backlashes. Misuse of ECT could lead to big amounts of pain for the patient. Mm -hmm. Another significant issue was memory loss. And in most cases, yeah. memory loss was not permanent. That tracks. For some, that however, tracks. the lost memories were never returned. That tracks. I don't know why, but for some reason I was fascinated by this electroshock therapy procedure. The use of electricity to treat patients seemed really interesting to me. Ooh. Was that the first? No, I thought that was the first episode of it. I was like, whoa. What's my time zone? I'm some in years Central. Had passed, and closer to the end of a semester, one of my computer science teachers mentioned that local internships were opening up. Internships in game development, software development, etc. Ooh. After class, my teacher called me in, and he recommended me to apply for an internship at Nintendo, 
because their offices were near the university. Let's go! He told me that he could give me a letter of recommendation since I was one of the best students in the class. Awesome, Brad. After some heavy consideration between Nintendo and other choices, I remembered all the good times I had with Nintendo products when I was younger, and it inspired me to choose to apply at Nintendo. Very good. I knew that Nintendo was working on the Revolution console, the one that yep. was going to be renamed to Nintendo Wii later that year. Yep, that's, that's I right. I submitted my application a couple of days before the deadline and waited. Some weeks... Personally, I would have worked at Tencent. I give praise to my Chinese overlords as we create such great games like League of Legends and Pokemon Unite. Praise be the almighty Chinese government. After that, I got a call for an interview. I tried my best to seem like a good person in the interview. Luckily for me, at the end of the interview, I was given the job right on the spot. Oh, I was really? surprisingly very At happy Nintendo? that I got the internship. Bruh. I was going to work for the company that created my childhood. The company that helped me see that humanity was maybe not as bad as I thought it was. Oh. Oh. I finally started my first day at summer internship at Nintendo on May 26, 2006. Some weeks away from when the official name for the console was revealed titled as the Nintendo Wii. I think there's someone knocking. Oh, oh my god, guys, it was Adelaide. He he was at my door. The campus was divided into many departments, game development, OS, hardware, etc. I wanted to work on game development, but I was assigned to the software development department, which was a crew that was working on the main OS of the Wii. I didn't mind it honestly, although I hoped I could be reassigned at the game development department sooner or later. I was given a warm welcome by the employees. They showed a lot of enthusiasm towards me, the new employee. I didn't like the attention honestly, but I tried to hide it and showed a bright personality like I usually do. My team was working on the OS of the Wii, mainly the Wii menu and settings menu, since a quantity of main features of the Wii was already done at the time. Honestly, my work wasn't challenging. I felt like they were assigning me the easy task since I was just the intern. But that was only for the first few weeks. When I showed my abilities that I could get my work done quickly with quality, I was starting to be assigned more of the complex Ooh. work. Overworking. The manager of my department was named Todd. He quickly became fond of me since I showed a lot of enthusiasm. All my boys love to my Todd. Work. My coworkers get a always told to me Todd that he referred to me as the greatest intern he has had or something like that. But I thought that was creepy, honestly. Although everything seemed to have been all butterflies and rainbows while I was working, I always somehow had that feeling that someone or something was watching me from afar. But I didn't know what or who. Mm. So what happens, this my prediction, right? This guy gets into programming the Me Channel because they're working on the Me Channel. He gets it done. He gets the Me Channel all set up and done. And then Mr. Guy that was inside of Adelaide is like, Oh, I want to help with it. I always wanted to be a Me. And so, yeah, in the part of the development process, this guy is like, Electroshock therapy on the Me's gets rid of them. It removes the memories and they go, oh, no, 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 no. So then, you get the guy coming in, and he's like, I want to be a me. And he's like, no. It's like, fine, I'll shock myself. And so, in a fit of rage, he goes into the game, and they all die. <laughs> you sound so British, yet so Southern. Some weeks later, July 10th to be specific, I was drinking some coffee in the break room, and I thought back to the game that I was trying to develop before college, Reclamation. The concept was still lingering in my head after all this time. It still seemed like a good concept for a game. And a bright idea came to my mind. So, since I knew my manager, Todd, clearly considered me as a good employee, I thought I could use my privileges for my good reputation to get my manager to do something. I had the great idea to pitch my game to him, so he could submit it to the higher-ups in the company. 
With excitement, I quickly finished my coffee and ran to log onto my computer to write the pitch document. Uh -oh. But while I was writing the document, I quickly became a bit tired. But I didn't let that and distract me. turned into a me. I wrote the documents, printed them, and oh. went to the manager's office. When I was walking with the documents in hand, I still felt exhausted. I felt like I was about to fall asleep on the spot at any second. I thought, maybe I just need another cup of coffee. The quickest way from my work zone to the manager's office was through the server room, the server that stores every important document from Nintendo of America. I thought that if I took a shortcut from there, I could stop by a different break room right before going to the manager's office to get some coffee. The server room was big, with multiple server machines perfectly ordered, so they made multiple hallways of server machines. It could be a maze if it wasn't so organized, to be honest. There was a door to the end of the hallway, which leads to the other side of the office, where my manager's room is located. I was still feeling exhausted, <laughs> there and seriously was sick from it. I drank the me transformation potion at 3am, gone wrong, gone viral, oh my god. I was halfway through the server room. I don't know what a point you left, Toby. Machines. Then, I slowly collapsed on the floor and passed out. Uh oh. Passed. Then out. I woke up. How long was I out for? But what I knew was I was extremely uncomfortable. Then, then he turned I into a pop vinyl. I was tied to a chair with my mouth covered and my arms tied behind the chair. Kinky. I was still in the server room, but the lights were off. I could just barely see it was the server room as the lights from the server machines were still on. And then, out of the darkness, I saw a shadowy figure. This figure was holding an axe. It huh? approached me and said, So you're finally awake, huh? I didn't recognize this voice, but I didn't have time to think about it, since the shadow showed himself right after. When I could finally make out who it was, I didn't recognize them either. Greetings, Austin. Cool My animation. name is Henry, he said. I have an axe and I'm about to kill you. My name is Mason. This guy was dressed mostly in black. He had gloves on and he had noticeable messy hair. The bastard looked like he didn't take care of his appearance at all. I tried to scream out for help, but my voice didn't come out of my mouth. I was scared shitless, and besides, I had my mouth covered. Anyways... Oh, sorry, chat. I was supposed to overreact to that, right? Oh, my... Oh, it was Henry? Oh, oh, wow. He wasn't a good guy? Oh, oh, no. Let's get right to business. As he said that, he swung his fire axe. I closed my eyes for the impact, but he went right for my legs. I suddenly felt an indescribable amount of pain. Itching down to my legs. My voice went oh, that's dry. Right. His legs I couldn't scream from my pain. I finally opened my eyes and looked up at Henry. The bastard was looking down at me with a smug face. You see, Austin, you went up the ranks so fast. It was unbelievable, really, he said. I've been in this company for far longer than you, working hard, in hopes that I could be praised for my hard work around here, he continued. I couldn't understand what he was saying. I was in too much pain to want to pay attention to him. I'll admit, I got a bit envious, but who wouldn't be? But now that I've got you all to myself, my spite will be pleasing, Henry continued. Mm. I looked beside Henry, noticing that the documents in my game proposition were still on the floor. Henry then picks them up off the floor and reads them for a bit. Reclamation, huh? He said while looking at my documents. Can't have this going around now, can we? Your work may be praised by the people around us, but deep down, you know it's nothing but trash, just like you. Ooh. Then, Henry Good rips fun. my folder in half and threw them in the nearby trash can. <laughs> Feeling stale much, huh? Wonder how that happened. Surely, I'm still a Henry stan, personally. Personally, I'm still a Henry. Surely, some, surely something's motivating this. Surely, surely he's not that. Surely, he's, he learned his lesson. Maybe your drink tasted a little off today, 
he said, while he had a smug look on his face. Then I looked up at him in the face. We stared at each other for a I couple seconds. I ship Henry and Austin. Well, I thought, you. Did this fucker drug my coffee? What a dirty tactic. Oh, Austin, if only I could have a little more time to play with you. You see, you weren't meant to last long here in this company. See you on the other side, old friend. Then, Henry took his final swing. Roll the credits. Bruh. 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 Then, I woke up. I found myself in a void. It is hard to describe. Heaven? It was not exactly a black void, but a void of nothingness. A void of that color. That colorless color that you see when you sleep. The void you encounter yourself that's in black. when transitioning from dream to dream when you sleep. That, that's it didn't have black. a color. It didn't have a texture. Black. It was just nothing. I couldn't feel anything. In fact, I couldn't feel my body at all. I couldn't feel anything. It felt like none of my senses were working. There was no temperature, not a single cold or warm feeling. I didn't feel anything at all. Am I dead? Probably. I couldn't remember what had happened to me, but after some He should be. He should be dead. He took an axe to the neck. That bastard! I tried to scream, but I didn't have a voice. Right after, I remembered it. Voices started to come from every direction. Thousands of voices overwhelming my mind. The you are not done yet. Have determination. Wrong song. Oh, it froze. It froze again. One second. You're not done yet. You... This isn't the right part. I, I grabbed the wrong version. <laughs> this isn't. I grabbed the wrong version. God damn it, Steve, I got it. No. <laughs> damn it, Steve, I got her. What? No, we gotta do me dirty. Be suicidal, suicidal. If I say it's over. Okay. Repeating the same sentence. You are not done yet. They were saying that sentence in a weird language, one that I didn't recognize, but I understood. The voices were overwhelming my head. It felt like my head was about to explode. When it finally reached its climax, I screamed, then woke up again. I always scream when I hit. My eyes only saw brightness for a second. But when my vision finally adjusted, I found myself in my assigned working computer, and I recognized it by my desktop background. I was standing in the Windows taskbar, where I saw some of my task- Oh god, I'm in the computer! Oh no! <laughs> I was standing on the Windows taskbar. Bar shortcuts, Internet Explorer, my programming software, the File Explorer, etc. I remembered again what had happened to me, sat down from the shock. I was sitting down thinking for a few minutes, remembering, remembering the horrible things that Henry did to me. But suddenly, out of the corner of my eye, I saw my hand. I stood up and got a good look at my body. My whole body was sort of transparent. I could still see it, but it was barely visible and my whole body felt like it was going to break apart at any second. It felt unstable. Hand? I was not feeling any sort of pain per se, but it was a weird feeling throughout my body. How am I still alive? I said to myself. Fading. And I realized that my voice was finally back. It felt like it had been hours since I've truly said a word. Was this a miracle? Some sort of God to give me a second chance? I didn't know.
then. And then he I entered remember. Minecraft and became Hero Brian. Yep, that, that's that's where this story's going. I'm not done yet. What could this mean? Then I remembered Henry's face. His smug fucking face. He was so hot. His facade. Oh. Looking down at me. He ruined me. He ruined my world. I was livid. There was no way I could go back in time and save myself. There isn't any way I can fix all of this. It was all because of him. I was so mad. Okay, chat, so just remember, if you're gonna die, die in the server room, and then you can just become Monica. I wanted to throw something, but I couldn't. Everything I had worked up to, everything I had achieved, everything I had, it was all gone. All fucking gone. The bastard had taken everything away from me, and now I have nothing, no one. Ah! I'd scream uh, out. I couldn't uh, hold in my frustrations any longer. I started banging on the ground with all I had. I couldn't punch or throw anything, so it's all I could do to let out this feeling to hit something. I'd continue to let out these enraged screams. I could feel tears of anger slowly make their way to the corner of my eyes. You had to take everything away from me! Why did you have to ruin everything for me? I'd scream out at nothing. No one could hear me. No one ever would again. I'd feel the tears start to run down, but I was too angered to put any focus into it. I'd continue to bang at the ground for a few minutes, the tear fully flowing down and now hitting the floor, as my screaming of Pain. anger had just turned into a sob of helplessness. All my anger was just overflowing with sadness. I just wanted to feel alive again, but I know that's never going to happen. I'm just going to be stuck here, forever, alone. Sad. I guess there's nothing else to do than just explore. I'd managed to slowly let out some words as I let out a deep sigh before wiping my tears and standing up. Then I thought, if I can't do anything to fix the past, I'll make my future better instead. But what future? I'm stuck in a damn computer, I thought. But first, before I figure it out, I gotta do something about my body. It doesn't feel... Right, I thought. I sat down on the floor again and started thinking for a couple of minutes. I am a ghost, right? A ghost that is possessing this computer, right? I thought. Then if I am a ghost, I can possess stuff, right? I continued. Hmm. Then that led to a great idea. I made my way to the file explorer I Let's go! and clicked on it. Then, the window opened up before me. As if I was using a touch screen, I could move it around with my hands. Then, I started looking through my files in search of the one I was looking for. But suddenly, Mason, when I was you scrolling, might be getting I found a folder. Really? A folder I had no idea. Reclamation, the one folder where I stored the documents I made for the proposition of the game. I stared at it for a minute and thought, it really would have been a great game, huh? Then I reluctantly moved the folder to the recycling bin. I didn't want Henry Bruh. or anyone to steal the idea. Bruh. If I wasn't going to have it, no one would. Bruh. The Rock. Pain. After that, I continued the search for the file I was looking for. Then, I found it. The file was named mechannel underscore simu underscore version 0.14.exe. This file was a bare bones PC port of a prototype Me Channel version that I was given some weeks ago. Here we go! I was not really familiar with the Me Channel since it was Here already pretty close to completion when I was hired. This prototype was one of the first versions of the Me Channel. This version basically only had head shapes and facial expressions. I would have gone for a later version, but I was stuck with the version that I had since I was just given the prototype. I opened the file, and the simulation started. I was led straight to the me creation menu. I selected my gender, head type, average eyes, and mouth. I would have also gotten hair, but they didn't have any work done in this development version. So, I had to go with a bald head for now. I also wanted a body with the me, but the bodies were not being worked on in this prototype at the time. So I got an idea. In another window on my desktop, I opened the paint app. It was difficult to use, but I made some basic gray and red shapes, and I saved the shapes as PNG pictures. I studied some 3D modeling at college, so I knew the basics of it. 
I had the idea that I could make a 3D model of a basic body. I opened a modeling program that I had installed on my desktop and went to work. I ended up- This is kind of lit, bro. Imagine like- I, I, I always thought the idea and what I want to try, I've never done it, but doing like the 3D paintings in VR, it's like that, but like so much more in depth. That'd be kind of litty. I'm making a very rough model of a body. It looks sort of Pringle robotic, soup. Thank you so much for the prime sub. I appreciate it. Now. Then I imported the me head that I made previously into the model and exported the final result onto my desktop. By this point, I was surprised by how easy using the computer was. I got really used to it really quickly. But anyways, after that, I opened the exported model file in a model viewer I had installed and got a good look at the model. If I'm a ghost or some sort of spirit, wouldn't that mean I can use this model as a body to sort of keep my soul in form? I asked myself. Then, with curiosity, I tried to walk head on to the model I created. I suddenly had a weird urge to go right inside it. Then, as weird. if I was a ghost, my hand went right through the me's body. It felt like my hand was submerged in water. I pulled my hand out and chuckled. I turned around my back and walked backwards. My body phased right inside the me, and for a moment, it felt like I was completely submerged in water. I was inside the me. I couldn't move for a few seconds, but then, I could. Bruh. My body felt brand new. My being didn't feel unstable anymore. It finally felt like I had a real body again. I got happy. Felt like I hadn't had a normal- Note, he made the model low poly, so that's why the fingers look like claws. Thank you. Normal body for a long while. While I was moving around in my new body, I noticed something in the distance, far from the desktop. Far in the distance from where I was, there was a hole. A black hole. Black hole. I didn't recognize it as being a part of my desktop or my wallpaper. I walked there to check it out. This hole was just about the perfect size where I could go completely in. Then I poked my head through it. What I saw there was, it was kind of unbelievable. It's hard to describe, but it was close to an infinite hallway, laying a totally reflective floor with walls that were filled with multiple holes, signs hanging right above them. These signs said the names to what I would assume the holes led to. Multiple names of computers and their owners, electronic devices, Wii testing devices, and network devices. There were a lot of them. I couldn't even count them. But one name caught my eye. Security system. Then, I took my head out of the hole. I stood there for a minute, trying to process what I just saw. By what I saw, I guessed that it would lead to other machines at Nintendo. But how? Why was this here? Curiosity took over me, and I decided to enter into the hole. When I was inside, I looked behind me, and there was indeed a hole that leads back to my computer. But I remembered, since I was, you know, dead, my computer would be reset and given to a new employee. So I decided that I wouldn't go back to my assigned computer, in case something happened to me while I was inside. It's like yeah, Wreck-It Ralph. Below me. There were yeah, bro. When was when was this written? Did Wreck-It Ralph steal this idea from We Deleted You? When was it written? Not when was when was this animated? When was like it the written? floor showed me my new body. I smiled and continued walking. I headed towards the hole that caught my attention, the security system. When I headed inside, I found myself in a small room. I looked in front of me, and there were dozens, hundreds of uncountable screens. These screens were showing security footage from all the cameras at Nintendo of America, not only the software development department. But one camera, the one at the center of the wall of screens, was only showing static. Ignoring that, I decided to head back into the hole. But then, I had the urge to look back again while I was leaving. I noticed that the center camera had stopped showing static. I walked back to see it up close. This camera was now showing footage from the server room. The server room where I was assassinated. It was still dark, but I could barely see something that shook me. I could see my real life body, still Dude. tied to a chair, 
missing its head and legs. Ew. And the surrounding walls were completely splashed with blood. Ew. I could see no trace of Henry. Ewy. Ewy, gross, gross. I turned around. I wanted to vomit, but I couldn't. Most likely because I was not human anymore. Then, after some self-reflection, I looked back at the screen. After some seconds, suddenly at the end of the hallway, someone opened the door. I could barely make out who it was, but I believe I saw one of my co-workers, Mike. He turned on the light, then he saw me. He immediately turned around and left the room with his hands covering his mouth. I kind of felt bad for him. I would have done the same. And finally, I turned around and left the room. That's awful. I went back into body the reported. I and A the weird body has been again. discovered. Since I didn't want to go back to my assigned computer, I decided to find a good computer where I could stay for the time being, while I figure out what to do from here on out. I started walking, and after a few minutes of walking besides countless holes and endless machines, one of them caught my eye. This hole was named Desktop underscore Henry Morris. Ooh. Henry, I thought. I was surprised to see it there. I forgot he obviously would have had a desktop here. With curiosity, I entered the hole that would lead to his desktop. When I came out of the hole, I found myself in an environment similar to where I first woke up. But it was... kind of basic. Henry had close to no taskbar icons and the default Windows background. But that didn't matter. I didn't see anything that pointed to Henry using his computer at the moment, so I started walking from the hole where I came from. Hmm. Bold choice to go into your murderer's computer. I found the file explorer shortcut and proceeded to open it. The first thing that came to mind when doing that was to look for reclamation. I thought there might have been a chance that he successfully stole a concept for some reason. But I luckily didn't find anything. I sighed in relief. But then, after that, I had a bright idea. What if... I can mess with his work? I started looking for the most recent documents. I couldn't find anything too weird, but I proceeded to erase the three most recent ones. After they got erased, I chuckled. He wanted to ruin the future I was so close Revenge. to achieving. And for what? Himself? How fucking selfish. I'm gonna make him get a taste of his own medicine and ruin him. I continued looking around his documents and deleting things, but I tried to not make it too obvious. After some minutes of doing that, I decided it would be enough for today and left. I walked back to where the hole was and thought, If this hole is on the desktop, does it mean that this area is off screen? I figured out that this area would not be visible for the user using the computer, so it would be relatively safe to stay here. I knew that just messing with Henry's work for the rest of my post life wouldn't get me anywhere. But then, I thought, what if I help Nintendo? I was never the type to like the idea of helping people, but if I was going to be stuck at Nintendo forever, I might as well do something good with my afterlife. And so it was. For a few weeks I went around many machines, fixing errors, fixing development glitches, adding content. If anything- Bro, imagine going into work one day, knowing that there's like this bug that you don't know how to fix, and you're just like, fuck. I gotta go in, I gotta get this thing done by tonight, or I'm fired. And you walk in, and it just works suddenly, and you're like, Oh, right, yeah, I did that. I, I fixed it. We can release the Wii now. With the Wii was wrong, I would fix it. I saw in some reports by the district manager, Todd, that some people were talking about a mysterious ghost that was helping with development. Oh my god! <laughs> Bro, I called it! I literally called it! I literally called, called it! The Helping Vessel. I found it kind of funny that they thought of me as an urban legend. Bruh. Bruh. But right when I was reading that report, I thought, Wait, I was assassinated at Nintendo! I had forgotten to ever check up on what had happened to my last body. Since I was already at Todd's computer, I might as well figure out while I was there. I started looking at the reports that were made some dates after I died, but I could not find anything. The only report that I could find was one that said I had quit. I was surprised. Why? 
Why would they lie about this? About me? Nintendo doesn't want people to know then that someone it died. struck me. The Nintendo Wii. Nintendo's biggest console at date was just a few weeks away from release. If, for some reason, word got out that someone was assassinated inside their headquarters, it would start a controversy. Then, the launch of the console would be nothing but a joke. True. So it I made said. so much sense. But still, I was surprised. I was surprised that they would do such a move. Then, I continued browsing through the reports made by the manager, and then, one caught my eye. This report was dated somewhere before I got hired. In short, this report said, Our team has found a set of mysterious creepy rooms hidden within the files of the Me Channel. We are too late in production of the Wii to remove it, but we are trying our best to find the culprits of this atrocious edition. So far, we have only found what seems to be a hospital hallway and a functional electric chair room. Bruh. <laughs> Again, we are sorry for any inconveniences. <laughs> I know we've Signed seen Todd. I know we've seen both of those, but that's still like Weird, what? I thought. Why would someone add something like that? I concluded. After that, I left Todd's computer and continued with my journey to help the Wii's launch. Until one day, the day before the Wii's launch. I was in the security camera room, looking around the workspace. I liked looking back at the headquarters This is when he gets electrocuted, right? I sort of miss being human. It was Who day before launch. I would miss being human, something that I hated so much. When looking at the cameras, I thought, how did Henry turn off the cameras? It was obvious he was not part of the security department, so I thought for a second, if he had any collaborators. But that thought was interrupted by something I saw in the cameras. I saw Henry. I had not seen that good for nothing in a while. Not since he killed me. That bastard, I mumbled. I was not happy to see him. But then, I saw him take one Wii from one of the Wii piles that we had ready to ship. Then he entered one of the back rooms with it. The back this intrigued rooms. me with curiosity, however, as I wondered exactly what he was planning on doing. My interest got the better of me, and it was for the worst. I decided to then make my way towards the hole where I came from. Then I looked for the specific Wii Henry was using, and entered inside. I figured that at first, Henry was planning on playing around with the console to experiment with the code. I wasn't, however, going to let that slide. A taste of karma would be perfect to serve him, but the timing of this will have to be perfect. Wouldn't it be fun to mess around and spite him for all the things that he's done to me? I'd personally say it's justified. I could notice from first glance Henry, who finished setting up the console and was apparently drinking out of a bottle of beer during the process. Was he an alcoholic? Knew that son of a bitch couldn't have any redeeming qualities to him. Hmm. As I was examining his actions, I realized that it would be blatantly obvious that I was watching the scene, and it would have been a stupid decision if I decided to move right to the screen. So right. I stayed back. Good idea. However, something was off. What's off? What was 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 off? I white? looked back and saw Henry, who was focused on opening up the Me channel. He pressed on the selection to create a new Me avatar. He gave the selected Me the male gender role, and seemingly disturbing like features from then on out, although they reminded me of my own body. The Me was hairless and bald, its eyes completely widened and enlarged, a cartoon-like grin and a small nose. Afterwards, the process of the Me's appearance was done, then Henry typed in a name. Edeled. I could feel myself raising an eyebrow at this, almost literally, but I couldn't do much. Wasn't that delete backwards? Quite an odd choice if I say so myself, and it honestly weirded me out. Very weird. Really off Very strange. Feeling, and I thought that this was enough. I should probably get out of here before he notices me. Right. I, I was midway too. through the process of getting out of there until I heard something. <laughs> I've always wanted to be a me. That was coming from Henry? What the? What the hell was he talking about? Is he that drunk? I wanted to see if he was going to do something Bruh. stupid, so I stayed for a couple more seconds. But then, he looked at his right and stood up. I finally decided that it was enough and left. While I was halfway back into the hole from where I came from, I suddenly got electrocuted. 
I felt the electricity go completely through my body. Oh. It felt like my whole body was on fire. I felt myself moving and shaking in pain, and that went on for a couple of seconds. Oh. It all felt like my soul was leaving my body. But, while I was being severely electrocuted, something entered my non-existing ears. I heard Henry screaming. Then, the shock finally stopped. I fell on the floor and felt very tired. But only one thought came to my mind. Was he also being electrocuted? Then, finally, I passed out. Hmm. I woke up. I found myself in a dark room, laying in a bed, inside of a hallway. A hospital hallway. The atmosphere was dark, and I could see countless to endless beds in the distance of this hallway. After looking around my surroundings, the reel of memories flooded back to me. What? What happened to me? I thought silently to myself. I stood up, and I instantly almost tripped. My body suddenly felt sort of... incomplete. Then, I looked at my hands. Every few seconds they would kind of... glitch out. I realized that my whole body would do that. It was like my model was sort of corrupted. Just pretend it's happening all through the episode, because adding it individually would be a pain. Thank you. Walking. Questions were filling my mind. I couldn't comprehend what had happened to me. But then, a memory came back to me, from some weeks ago, that mysterious document from the manager. Is this... that hallway? I thought. Uh oh. Then, that means... I'm still inside of the Wii, I continued. Uh oh. I sighed. But after that, I noticed that my voice changed. It sounded... weird. Oh, it sort of sounded glitchy and distorted. Then, a realization came to mind. Maybe, just maybe... Oh god, I'm corrupted. Oh god, it hurts. <laughs> the shock of electricity that I received corrupted my model. Maybe even my soul. It made it act like this. But I hoped it was not permanent. But soon enough, I continued walking. Looking for a possible way out. I needed to go back to the hole. As I walked, the hallway started getting darker. This is what happens darker. when you catch missing now. Suddenly I got to the end, True. and I found a door right in front of me. As I went through that door, I found a chair with a mysterious machine beside it, including a headset attached to it. I just stood there, kind of That's rad. speechless. When I entered, I instantly got reminded of the mysterious electric chair that was mentioned in the reports alongside the hospital the mysterious hallway. mysterious electric chair. I couldn't comprehend it, but it was real. Then, suddenly, I heard a scream. It was an agonizing cry for help. I immediately rushed outside. When I got out of the room, I saw a me. Or better said, Henry's me. Uh-oh. I stood there for a second, looking at it, and examined it directly. They're gonna scruff, eh? They're gonna have a little, a little, a little, little, little tussle. They're gonna be like, oh, oh, hey, you can't be in my way. This is my way, you see? Wow, wow, wow. And they're gonna fight. They're gonna be like, Rawr, we're gonna fight now. Me and you are gonna fight. I got my me boxing gloves, you see? It's very, uh, hoo -hoo. And he's gonna be like, oh, well, actually, he talks more like, oh, well, well, I, I didn't really want to fight you. I just got electrocuted. It's like, you killed me back in my past life. Well, I didn't mean to. I just didn't want the job to be taken over. I'll, I'll deal with that after this fight here. You see what I'm saying? Correctly. It was wearing light blue hospital clothing, holding its hand to its stomach, containing a very fearful and paranoid expression plastered on its face. I stared at it for a couple of seconds. Now then, without hesitation, I jokingly virgins. tried to be friendly to it to see where it would go. Bruh. It was obviously just a me. It wouldn't kill a fly. Hey there, fellow me, I said. Then, I noticed that on its hospital clothes, it had a little name tag with its name, and I read it out loud. Elid, huh? It's still a weird name, I continued. But then, the me suddenly spoke. With a shocked tone, it said, 
my name is Henry, and who- wh what are you? Wait, Henry? I jumped backwards, taken completely off guard. I was not expecting it to do anything, but... Henry? <laughs> it's... No, that's impossible. But then, I remembered it all. I remembered that Henry was screaming when I was being electrocuted. It all connected in my head right from that moment forward. For some sort of reason, we were both electrocuted, and Henry died from the result. And now, Henry's soul lives in this we, or more specifically, in his me. There is no viable way Henry now lives as this me, I thought. We just stood there for a couple of seconds in complete silence with bare to no movement. Barack. I was in true shock. Barack. But then, I snapped back. I remembered what he did to me, and I started to slowly walk to him. And while I moved forward towards him, I started to speak. Well, well, well. Look who we've got backed into a corner here. How's it going, old friend? What have you been up to? I myself have been having a nice time around here and adapting. Wonder why. Oh, maybe it's because you're the reason why I'm dead. Henry stood there, eyes widened while Bruh. shifting back towards the wall as he responded weakly. Austin? Wh How the hell did you end up here? You're... You're supposed to be dead. You were... You're supposed to be gotten rid of. I... I killed you! He exclaimed in fear. Oh, you thought you killed me, huh? Hilarious. I'm truly charmed, Henry. Did you really think you could have taken me alive that easily? I alleged back at the he, figure standing... He... He did kill you. You're dead. You're... You're... You're in a we. Your soul is in a we. He... You did die. Don't be cocky, bro. In front of me, abruptly obtaining confidence in my voice. It looks like the tables have been turned around towards my side. Really? I chuckled before continuing. It looks like I was worthy of obtaining a second chance at life. Just how I desired it. What better way is there to use the time I got than giving you what you deserve? The hopeless figure only fearfully stared back at me, looking objectively just like prey. Austin, pl please, I'm sorry. I never wanted it to turn out like this. I'm sorry for killing you. I have been really trying to move on from it. I swear to you. Henry whimpered. He continued only to cower in panic. It is too late to go back and try to fix the past. The both of us are dead and we can't take it back. But it's not too late to fix what comes forward. We can always make peace and move on from the past. C can we? No. He anxiously exclaimed. His offer only became more and more desperate. I only scoffed back in disgust. It's too ah, late to well, apologize. you really should have thought twice about acting like you did before it's taking it out on others, Henry. I worked too hard for this company, and it's all thanks to you that I've lost everything I've worked up for. We're stuck here, and there's nothing you can do about it. You wanted to take everything from me, didn't you? I could feel my adrenaline rushing, my temper taking over. It would only be so long before I snapped. I couldn't wait another second. I rushed towards him forcefully and punched him directly oh. in the face. Henry's body was shoved backwards away from the force of the hit. Henry placed one of his hands towards the spot of the hit and held it, before locking eyes with mine. He growled back at me, finally cracking. You want vengeance, don't you, Austin? Very well. Henry then charged at me and tried to tackle me, but was abruptly stopped from my swift movements. Before he could pin me down, I slammed my fist right towards his face once more, hitting him before he collapsed onto the floor. Henry rose again, standing up and attempting another attack with his right arm, but it was blocked by mine. Then I noticed his leg, and did a leg sweep that made Henry fall over. At the distance, I noticed the room where the electric chair was located. Mama said knock you out! I'm gonna knock you out! How did I end up back on Siva Gutter? Every time! Every time I end up back on Siva Gunner! Well, he didn't get a copyright strike, so... Mama said, knock, knock, knock you out. I grabbed a hold of Henry's leg and began to drag him towards the room. Mama said, he was struggling, out. but I didn't hesitate I'm one bit. This, Mama said, this was knock, what knock, I always wanted. I finally arrived at the electric chair. I'm then, knock, I threw out. Henry towards Mama the electric chair to tie him up while he was desperately trying to fight back. I was quick to find a dial I'm and gonna knock you out. Mama said knock you out. It was around two seconds before I'm gonna, I'm gonna knock you, knock you I looked at Henry's face. 
He was looking at me with an angry look. Henry then was severely electrocuted for several seconds. I only stood there and watched the view, satisfied, with a grin on my face. Well, well, well. Look at how the tables have turned once again. Oh, how pitiful it is to see you here all helpless and restrained, with nowhere to run. This is what you get. When the procedure was finally over, Henry had passed out, and I looked at his body, happy with my accomplishment. Some minutes had passed, and Henry hadn't woken up. While I waited for him to wake up, I decided to kill some time by doing anything, but I didn't know what. But while I was still at Nintendo, I figured out how to easily pull up the Wii's internal files and developer tools while I was directly inside the Wii. Right. So, while Henry was still strapped to the chair and passed out, I was busy examining the code of the mysterious hospital hallway in the electric chair. While I was examining it, I figured out that the hospital hallway is where Mii's go when they get erased in the Mii channel. When they get erased, the Mii's get automatically strapped to life support machines in the hallway, and a pain value triggers in their code, meaning oh. that they also go through extreme torture when they get deleted. And this pain value stays triggered in them forever, until they die, and the value doesn't seem to be removable. And the pain could even be multiplied by a bug in the code if the me would somehow be deleted multiple times, but that was unlikely to happen. Soon enough, after some amount of time decided by RNG, the me would die and get completely erased from the Wii's memory. Oh. The code seemed to have been done by an amateur. It was super easy to read through and it was filled with errors and bugs. Simply by looking at it, I found out how to easily escape the hallway and go back to the me channel and back with a bug on the code. I didn't understand why all of this was here, by a technical standpoint, having this extra process on the Wii's processor would not help with anything, and by a developer standpoint, this feature didn't make sense either. But anyways, I started looking at the electric chair's code after that, and I found out that it creates fake shocks to simulate electricity, so it wouldn't have any of the normal effects real electricity could cause on someone. Basically, triggering a pain value on the patient's code again, but this time, the pain doesn't stay until they die. The code didn't point to this chair being used for anything. Its processes and features were not tied to the hallway at all, besides them being connected by rooms. Hmm. After I stopped looking through the code, Henry hadn't woken up yet, and I got tired of waiting. So, I used the bug I found in the code to send Henry's unconscious body back to the me channel. After that, I left the room, and I discovered one of the holes to go back to the hallway place, which sends me to the other electronics at Nintendo. Hmm. In relief, I ran over to it. But, when I tried to go through, something stopped me. It was like a barrier. An invisible wall of sort was pausing me from going through. I could not even see the other side. Weird. I desperately tried to go through, but I was unable to. I kept pushing myself for several minutes. Thoughts were filling my mind while I was in the so process. He's stuck in the Wii now. I'm never going to escape this stupid Wii, I thought. I only stopped as I let my temper rise. I was livid. And it's that like that girl from Wrecking Ball. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. She'll be added to the race roster. Then gamers can choose her as their avatar. When they see her glitching and then you're okay, glitching wait. and just being herself, they'll think our game is broken. Because she's a glitch. <laughs> when the game's plug is pulled. <laughs> the exact same shit. A glitched character getting stuck at a game. That's it. It's the exact same story, bro. <laughs> Bruh, how? Beside the hole. I couldn't stand it any longer. I pointed the blame towards this abominable world for trapping me inside this damn Wii, and for everything. I swore one thing though, Henry's going to regret it for what he's done to me, and he won't get away from me this time. I immediately rushed back to the me channel, and I saw Henry standing there, awake and deep in thought. I remembered what I saw in the code of the hallway, that the Mies would go through extreme pain when deleted, and that gave me a great idea. Oh boy. I sneaked up on him and I took him down to the ground. I grabbed a hold of his leg unexpectedly and I started dragging him to the delete icon on the me channel. 
We finally got to the delete button, and I forced Henry inside of it. But before I finished, Henry whimpered in defeat. You heartless bastard. After the deed was done, I felt not quite satisfied with my achievement, so I decided I could play with Henry for just a bit longer. I went back to the hallway and found Henry standing there, with his back facing towards me. I headed towards him, only with taunting intentions. What's the matter, little me? You're not a fan of getting deleted? I teased, smugly looking at him. Henry suddenly shifted his body direction and faced me, but didn't speak a word. Ah, what's wrong, Henry? Are you scared of me? I wouldn't have expected you to back down this easily. You were so ruthless back there. What happened to your confidence, huh? You know all of this is your what fault, is I continued, shit? smirking to myself in delight. From what I least expected, Henry Enjoy talked back. Don't call me that. Henry responded with an almost silent tone. Now, what was that? I need you to speak louder. I raised an eyebrow, but only went on, taking charge of the conversation. Henry's pupils expanded, oh. to the point of almost completely covering his eyes. Oh. Before I could think of it, Henry pulled an axe out of nowhere and shouted, Don't- He just yoinked an axe out of nowhere? Call me Henry! Immediately after crying out, Henry rushed after me, about to swing his axe. He quickly got near me and swung his weapon with force, but I surprisingly caught the blade with my hands. I didn't think it would work. I even expected to miss. My, my. You think a little weapon is enough to scare me? Where the hell did you even find this? I exclaimed. After I said that, Henry continued swinging his axe while I was backing up. I think it can! Suddenly, Henry luckily struck a hit on me, right on my chest. I dropped on the floor, holding my hand on the wound. My vision panned down. My wound was huge. There was no blood or anything similar, only pain. Pain that I needed to give back to Henry. Uh-oh. So, do you really think that would do anything to me? I exclaimed. Without hesitation, I quickly rushed at Henry, leaving him with no time to react. I grabbed him by the neck and pulled him up. With a grin on my face and a scared look on Henry's, I glared down at my hand. I forgot I had modeled it to I be low poly, be a good so they looked like man. claws. I realized they were perfect for the job. I smiled, and swiftly cut Henry's head off with my claws. Bruh. I dropped Henry's dead body on the floor, but I was still not satisfied. I knew that Henry would appear on the hallway again at any minute, and he would most likely find a way to get back to the Me Channel. So, I figured that playing with Henry for the rest of eternity wouldn't be satisfactory since he would come back again and again. I started walking. I wanted to find a way to punish Henry for all that he did to me once and for all. Mm. The pain on my wound had already stopped aching by then. While I continued walking, something caught my eye. On a wall at my right, I saw a broken glass box with the label emergency on top of it. That must have been oh, where the axe that's where the was using axe came was. from. It would be obvious they would add some kind of background prop like that in this kind of scenery. Then I ignored it and continued walking. While I was walking, I started brainstorming various methods, but suddenly a memory came to me. I remember the thing that I found while working on homework for college all those months ago. ECT. Electroshock therapy. If I could use it correctly, I could make Henry go through extreme pain and forget everything about himself. Uh, I predicted but how? that one. I knew that the electric chair inside the Wii caused fake shocks. I started thinking, but then an idea came over me. The power supply, I exclaimed with excitement. Oh, so it's going to be real. I power. realized that if I could find a way for the electric chair to draw in real power from the power supply, Bruh. I could guide the electricity towards the electric chair. But for it to work, the Wii would have to be plugged in, something that would be hard to achieve. Except if some unlucky bastard bought the Wii we were in. If I could execute the plan while the Wii was plugged in, it could work. But then, I realized that if the motherboard, where the processor and RAM were, suddenly got a lot of power from the power supply, it would melt. The motherboard and the rest of the week could overheat or even yeah. melt. Yeah. So okay. I only had one okay. To do it. One okay. It's all. It's all coming together now. Okay. I got gotcha. you. Henry. Once okay. and for all. 
Okay. I immediately ran towards the electric chair room and got to work. I knew that it would take a lot of time to do, especially because of this messy code, but it would be worth it. Then, I started modifying the code of the electric chair. I was modifying it so it would draw energy directly from the power supply. It was difficult because the code of the chair was really messy, but the progress I got so far was excellent. I thought the plan would be executed perfectly. Until a couple of days later, I felt the Wii power turn on. The Wii? <laughs> After a couple days, I felt my Wii power turn on. Somebody already bought the Wii? I exclaimed. But it was barely 10 days after the supposed launch due to the console. Was the Wii that popular for it to sell that quick? Yeah, it was pretty I popular. It, to myself. it was pretty popular. I rushed to the Mii channel. I saw Henry standing there, looking at the screen. Ooh! Acting just like a Mii. Hi, Kyle. And on the other side of the screen, I Hi, saw... Hi, Kyle. A kid. A little kid. And this kid was looking at Henry with a frightened expression. Ah, perfect. An innocent kid now has to experience Henry's bullshit. I thought to myself, with a hint of concern. As much as I despised all of humanity, I always had a soft spot for kids. I knew that they were purely impeachable and naive. They never meant any harm. Unfortunately for them, though, it won't always be this way. They'd eventually grow up to become just like the rest. Pain. So, if I wanted to execute my plan without affecting the kid, I would have to wait. But my thoughts were interrupted mm. by the kid. The kid Yo, suddenly Cotton grabbed Henry with prime sub, I appreciate and deleted it. him. We're now two subs away from what's happening. I didn't think the kid the would delete him. Actually, how many Damn, more? was that me really that creepy? I thought. Then, the kid proceeded to create a new me. This me was seemingly less obscure compared yeah, to Henry's, with average features. But it appeared Kyle. identical to the kid's appearance. Kyle. And this kid named his me, Kyle. Something that I would assume was the kid's name. But by the time the kid finished his me, Edeled was back at the me channel. He must have figured out the bug too, huh? Then the kid immediately deleted him again, the first chance he got. He proceeded to leave the Wii menu and decided to go play some Wii Sports, the Wii's packed in game. I didn't want to stay to see the rest. After all, the modifications to the chair were still not done. I went back to the electric chair room and continued with my work. Gotcha. But after around 20 minutes, I heard the kid outside. Apparently, he started having a conversation with Henry back at the Mead channel. I couldn't make out any of Henry's words, but I could hear the kid. The kid was mentioning how Edeled was creepy, and how he didn't want him in his me channel. I felt sympathy for the kid, for having to deal with Henry and all his bullshit. But, that gave me even more motivation. Even more motivation to punish Henry. Some days had passed, and while I was messing around with the files, I figured out how to change certain properties of the Wii's image. I could make the screen go black. Go to static, completely mm, disconnected. Yeah, from the it's TV. all coming together now. I could even change the atmosphere of the me channel. But I bet that Henry already figured out how to do it, since he also figured out the bug to go back to the me channel. I thought that this ability could be useful for my advantage later. Around a week had passed, and I was almost finished with the modifications to the chair. I hadn't heard much of the kid until that same day. I heard a new voice. I went back to the me channel to see what was happening. But when I arrived, I arrived to find Henry in the middle of killing a me, the kid's me, with an axe. Bruh. Kyle's me seemed to be in a lot of pain. It seemed like Henry had cut off the legs of the me and was about to deal the final blow. Henry sure has something about cutting off legs, huh? I looked at the screen and I saw the kid and another one I would assume to be his friend. I wanted to stop Henry, but I was too late. He then proceeded to cut off the hey. me's head with the axe. After a couple of seconds, hey. the Wii got unplugged, and I went back to the electric chair room, defeated. I felt guilty that I couldn't stop Henry. It's safe to assume that the kid, Kyle, is now in some sort of shock, or even traumatized, along with his friend. But that pushed me even more, to do what was needed. As more time passed, the chair was finally finished, but I haven't felt the Wii being plugged in since that day. It would be safe to assume that the Wii was saved somewhere, or even returned to the retailers. So I waited. It was a long wait. But I would sometimes find myself daydreaming about how it would feel to be a human again. I couldn't even finish college when I was alive. I left my parents with so much college debt. Or I would find myself dreaming about many other things. 
things that came out of my imagination, like self-made TV shows, drama, comedies, etc. How it even play we man chat. What do you guys think? I'm kind of like split because I want to say I'm an Edeleb stan, right? Because like in the end, everything he did never really like hurt anyone besides the fact that he killed a guy. And, but also with Austin, like, the dude just got killed, and he just wants some revenge. You know what I'm saying? I don't know. Mason is a murder defender. I, I just feel like if you're talking from the perspective of Austin... He has nothing to be mad about because there's just a me that's sentient. He only knows about one, but really there's two. I don't know. I'm mean, I, The reason I'm not talking much is I'm like, make a poll right now who's better. I don't know. Because, I mean, I think... I think what he's doing, right? I think what Austin is doing is morally wrong because he's putting someone through more torture. But at the same time, if someone murdered me, I think that torture is justified. All right, let's hold a poll. We'll hold it for a couple of seconds. One in chat for Henry, two in chat for Austin. Who's good? Who's the good guy in this story? I think Austin just got killed for no reason, and he just wants a little bit of revenge. So I wouldn't call him a bad guy yet. But I also, like, Henry didn't really... Outside... He killed one... He killed Austin. And that's all he did that was wrong. But Austin's also putting Henry through so much infinite pain, even after he died. And he could have put a stop to it early. I don't know. I think Austin's a good guy. I want to say, I want to joke around and be like, oh, I'm an Edelud stan. But he sports Austin's a good in a guy while. in this situation. Being inside of the game itself would be something that my past self would have loved. And it was kind of fun, to be honest. And sometimes I would go back to the meat channel and play with Henry. But the things I did were not satisfying me because of the anticipation to finally execute the plan. Now, it had been around 10 years. I could tell by the Wii's internal calendar. I was taking a nap, sitting beside the electric chair. Until I suddenly felt the Wii being plugged in. I instantly woke up. I didn't hear the kids. Okay, so we're I going into Sam's story now. A female voice. Yeah. She proceeded to open the Wii menu and then... She started to talk to Henry. Again, I couldn't understand Henry, but I could hear the new voice. Apparently this new voice was named Sam, but she had empathy towards Henry and treated him with kindness and respect. She didn't want to delete him like Kyle did. I was a bit annoyed by that. I didn't think Henry deserved to be spared. They then- But also from her perspective, she doesn't know. Proceeded to talk about how Mies are sent to a horrible place when they get deleted, but apparently, Henry didn't want to speak more about it. That's all I heard that day. I got excited with temptation by the thought of this. I could finally execute my plan, but I would have to wait for the perfect moment to arrive. It would likely have to wait a couple more days, I thought. And so I started to wait. Until two days later. I was sitting on the electric chair, and I was puzzled, quite bored. It felt too quiet. Until I suddenly heard Henry talking to Sam. I realized since I could hear Henry, it meant he was most likely in the hallway for some reason, since I couldn't hear him when he was on the Mii channel. I was taken by surprise by this. I didn't expect Henry to be deleted, especially by Sam. Sam, I'm not upset with you. I understand that you want to know what happens when a Mii gets deleted, but please, never do this again. The pain gets worse every time I get deleted. I'll meet you in the Mii channel. Henry explained with a weak voice. I knew that this would be the perfect moment to finally reveal myself to Sam. 
I saw Henry going back to the me channel, so I forced the screen to go black, and I started reaching out to Sam. I didn't expect Edeled to be here. I quietly started. Who, who was that? Sam questioned frightfully. You'll find out soon, I concluded with a tease. Then, I let the console go back to the Wii menu. I wanted to keep myself mysterious in my identity to Sam for a bit longer. But like why? I didn't want to do everything at once, so I'll just have to keep it smart and inexplicable for a couple of days, just to make it perfect. But, the next day while I was listening outside the Wii, something got my attention. I heard Sam talking to someone over the phone. But that someone surprised me. It was Kyle. Kyle? There was no way. The kid that Henry traumatized all those years ago? It wasn't possible. But anyways, Kyle introduced himself as someone who used to own the same Wii and accidentally donated his Wii to a Value Village thrift store. Then he started talking about how he was contacting Sam to destroy the Wii, to deal with Edeled. It seemed Kyle had some similar intentions to mine. We both didn't like Henry one bit. I smiled at this. Knowing that someone also wanted Henry to be punished made me happy. But then, Sam declined the offer from Kyle. I was expecting that. Then, they had a little argument. I think it's so no, interesting. No! Edelette isn't like, some cold-hearted murderer! To see... Sam yelled. Well, he... How different people are missing bits of information causes everyone's perspective to be so different in this story. It makes you feel really conflicted watching through it all. Because it's the same story. I understand the plot now. But it's just like... What, how they interpret it and the information that each person doesn't have, how it causes different reaction, you know? He chopped off my me's legs and head, Kyle shouted. He grew up in a bad environment. And how do you know? Edeled told me. Then they went silent. What Sam said shocked me. He grew up in a bad environment? How selfish. I was alienated by society, labeled with a bullshit mental condition, and punished for it. But that didn't make me a cold-hearted murderer, like Henry. I was the opposite, really. I was finally contributing something good to society, and Henry had to take it away from me. How insensitive, I thought. After that, I felt Henry turned on the Wii himself, and Sam started affirming to society. Henry that she was not going to let Kyle do anything. Damn it, I thought. But... I was given the perfect motive. After their little conversation ended, I made the screen turn to black, and I started speaking to Sam once again. Oh, I wish Edeled was deleted. I miss doing all that stuff I did to him. Who are you? Sam screamed at me. Well, you're not painting yourself a great picture there, bro. If you want, if you want to give him, give her the proper information, you're not like, I miss torturing this guy that you're friends with. Ha 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 ha. Someone that needs to complete a procedure that had been postponed again and again, I affirmed. What do you mean? Sam asked. Electricity can cure a lot of things, especially when the shocks go right to the head, I affirmed. What do you mean? She demanded one more time. Henry wasn't the only one to become a me, I concluded. Not wanting to reveal more, I shut off the console. After that, I heard Sam go to bed. I chuckled. I knew the plan would be perfect. I started making preparations. I proceeded to delete all the axe files from the Wii, including all other weapons, in case Henry was to use them to defend himself from me. Then, the next day, I was just done with the preparations, but something that happened surprised me. I heard Sam calling Kyle again, but this time, Sam invited Kyle over because Sam wanted to know how Henry would react to Kyle. But Sam made sure Kyle doesn't bring up anything, to make sure he doesn't destroy the Wii. I was not expecting that to happen. Sam sure was an idiot. But I knew that this would be the perfect moment to execute my plan. Then, I realized that if I were to show myself, I would have to reveal my name. However, I wanted to prevent revealing my real alias, Austin. I wanted something that could confuse them and maybe even strike them with fear. I started thinking for a bit. Then finally, I came up with a good enough name. Corrupted Me. Corrupted Me. I decided on that name for several reasons, mainly referencing how my body and voice were corrupted because of Henry. 
And I was, indeed, a me. It made sense, but I could have come up with something better. Yet, there was not enough time. After about 15 minutes, the Wii turned on, and Henry and Sam made some chit-chat. Before all else could occur, the bell rang. I was enlivened, delighted, and enthralled. The adrenaline in my veins rushed with a fever of excitement. The anticipation was killing me. So, I made my way over to the Me channel and hid myself so Henry wouldn't see me. By the time I was there, I saw Henry greeting Kyle. On the other side of the screen, I saw two teenagers. Yeah, this is kind of crazy. I saw what bro. I recognized to be Kyle, but grown up. Puberty sure did hit him. And I also saw who I would assume to be Sam and his right. Surprisingly, this was my first time seeing them. I couldn't wait any longer. I wanted to execute my plan right now. Anticipation was killing me. I have been waiting 10 years to do this. But I had to wait for the conversation to be over. Then, they started talking about what Kyle remembers about Edeled. Well, I remember deleting you because I didn't want you on my me channel. And I also remember you violently murdering my me, Kyle explained. So you're saying I'm a murderer? Maybe, Kyle replied. Mm. Yes, I silently mumbled with agreement with Kyle. Then, Henry started shouting at Kyle because Kyle didn't learn the lesson to not delete me's. What utter bullshit. But I was about to delete Henry for the final time. When their little discussion was over, anticipation took over me and I made the screen go to static. It was finally time. I took the camera over to the hallway and put it under one of the light sources. I wanted them to see me. Then, when I was ready, I started speaking. Oh, hello, Sam. Did I interrupt Edeled's little meltdown? I teased. Sam looked at Kyle and asked, Do you know who that voice is? Kyle, being confused, said, No, I have no idea. I never heard that voice before. Huh. Heh. <laughs> It's honestly funny to see you trying to figure out who I am, but how about I just show myself right now, I concluded. Afterwards, I finally walked to the point where they could clearly see me. I smiled and revealed myself. I am the corrupted me. They looked at me for a second, and I saw some relief in Sam's face. She was happy that the mystery was finally out. I... Finally, I made the screen go to static again and took them back to the me channel. And I made the me channel dark to strike fear in Henry and them. If I wanted to execute my plan, I needed Henry to be deleted first because the chair was over at the hallway. So, I had to do it myself. I made so my way to the me channel. To be I stealthily moved up behind Henry and covered his mouth with my hands. Then, I started dragging him over to the delete button. Ready for some therapy, buddy? I said while dragging him. Henry was struggling for his life while I was dragging him, kicking See, and still makes him look like a bad but guy But he couldn't here. say anything since I had my hand covering his mouth. We finally arrived at the delete icon, and Edeled freed his mouth from my hand. Let me go, you son of a motherless goat! He shouted. For all the curses in the world, why did he have to say something so stupid? Damn, that was I was expecting him to say something better. That was kind of stupid. But what could I expect from someone like Henry? I covered his stupid. mouth again. You shut the hell up and deal with the upcoming pain, you understand? I hope you know the pain that you're about to experience will be more than you've ever endured. 650 volts you're getting, my friend. 650 volts! Actually, I didn't know exactly how much electricity he was getting, but I knew that the Wii's power supply could draw enough electricity to be effective for Henry. True. I just came up with that number to intimidate Henry. I wanted to see him beg for his life. I saw over at the screen, and both of them had fearful, terrified expressions on their faces. Sam was obviously fearing for Henry's wellness. I don't know, Good. man. This is it's. I concluded. When I finally it's like deleted that, that's Edeled, fucked up. I made my also... way over to the electric chair room, while also leaving the screen over there. But while I was doing it, I felt the Wii get disconnected. Did Kyle take it? I wondered. But I knew that Sam would most likely get it back, so I continued strapping Henry to the chair while he fought for his dear little me life. But we heard Kyle running with the Wii. He was most likely taking it somewhere. Then I felt Sam taking it from Kyle and she ran. I looked at Henry and said, 
Looks like Sam is stronger than we thought, right, Henry? Well, she being so nice to you is going to be her downfall. See, it's weird because Austin is clearly... I, I agree with chat right now. Austin is clearly in the right in this. And everything he's doing is justified because for n absolutely no reason he was br brutally murdered. No reason for it whatsoever. So it's justified to, be, to want this revenge and to work hard to get it. But the way he presents himself and the way he acts makes him seem like a villain. And you don't want, you know, like, it's hard to stand up to that, you know? I concluded. What is it that you want? Why can't you get over all this? It's been ten years or even longer. Why won't you give up on all this nonsense? Henry questioned with concern. I looked at him for a solid second, and then I hesitantly responded. I will never accept how things happened. I'm done being manipulated by this world. And we can't go back to how it was before. But I will make my last living moments the most enjoyable they could ever be. Henry, after acknowledging my response, looked at me and looked away. He suddenly had an expression of regret in his face. Maybe he was finally regretting what he did to me, but it was too late. Well... We now just gotta wait a bit so I can finally put you where you belong, Henry, I said while putting on the headset to his head and taping his mouth shut. Then, after our little conversation, we finally felt the Wii being plugged back in. I forced the Wii menu to turn back on, and I saw Sam looking at us with worry. Finally, I walked over to the electrical box beside the chair and cranked the dial. Henry then finally so got then severely real electrocuted. From the power I could hear his mumbles of pain while that happened. One. He was finally getting what he deserved. Gotcha. I couldn't be happier. The therapy was coming along nicely. I saw him shaking and- Now where I'm confused about it, in back whenever we saw this from Sam's perspective, shouldn't Edeled be dead? Like, I understand, like, that should be enough power to kill him, right? You'd think. But he ends up coming back, and he's missing, like, some of his memories, but not too many. And that was the plot hole I was confused about. Pain, with tears but... rolling down his face. After a couple of seconds, I stopped it. I knew by doing this, Henry would forget many details of his life, including stuff about this Wii. When the procedure was done, I looked at Sam and said, Well, it looks like Edeled can't just teleport back to the Me channel anymore. Boo-hoo, I said smugly. I wonder why. Oh wait, it's because the electricity made him forget how. The electricity is very good at doing that. It cured Edeled of that knowledge. But now, I must cure him of himself. I reached my hand over to the dial, and Sam screamed, Let him go! I obviously was not going to do that. After that, hmm. I saw Kyle entering the room with a bloody nose. Sam, I just don't want Edeled to do any more harm, Kyle told her. You mean... You don't want the corrupted me to do any more harm. She replied quietly as she looked back at the TV. Then, without saying a word, I proceeded to crank the dial once more. Henry got severely electrocuted again, but this time it was even stronger. He huh. was shaking even more. I could tell he was in extreme pain. It brings satisfaction to my eyes. I could finally see Henry suffer for what he has done. After a couple of seconds, I stopped the machine. While keeping my composure, I exclaimed, Well, I guess the procedure is over, I said. Hmm. Just one more shock. By now, the Wii was doomed to be melted and destroyed by the power supply, bringing more and more power into the Wii. But I just couldn't stop. Punishing Henry is the one and only thing that has truly brought me joy this last ten years. I simply couldn't stop. This time, I cranked the dial to full, and Henry was shocked badly. He was shaking and crying. I was so happy I could jump. My life could be over right now and I wouldn't have any regrets. Then, Sam turned off the TV. After a couple of minutes, the procedure was finally done. I knew the power supply couldn't handle any more power. Then, Sam and Kyle had a little discussion outside. I even heard some screams of pain from Kyle, but I was too occupied admiring my work. I reached down to Henry and grabbed his chin. You know, Henry, I have had so much fun with you these last few years. You would feel guilty for what you did to me, but you probably can't even remember what you did, I said. 
But I guess this will be our end, since this we will melt very soon. Thanks to you. I untied Henry, but he was barely conscious. I sent him to the me channel, and I followed soon after. I saw Henry. He told Sam that the we would melt very soon, but I made the screen go to static because I wanted to talk to Sam. When I appeared on the screen, Sam almost jumped at my sight, but then she asked me what I wanted. I want Henry in hell. That's what I want. I want Henry to burn in the fiery pits of hell, I answered. Right. You're sick. You're not the first person to tell me that, I said. Good, she stated. Maybe uh. I should pay him a little visit, I exclaimed with excitement. Don't, she demanded. There was a pause. Why so angry, Sam? Is it because I gave Henry some therapy? Why so serious, I asked Sam? Smugly. Some therapy? It's torture, she yelled. Oh, shut up. It's not torture. It's an actual recognized form of therapy, I said. I don't give a damn what it is. It's torture, Sam yelled again. If you insist. But, let's pay Henry a little visit. I cut the screen to static again while I made my way to the me channel. The static stopped, and now I was at the me channel, standing facing Henry. I saw that the textures of the me channel were beginning to go all over the place, corrupting. This likely meant that the Wii was beginning to overheat. Hello, Edeled. How are you? I said with enthusiasm. You, you get away from me, Henry said with anger. Why should I? Oh, wait. You're going to get your axe and try to chop my legs off again. Well, guess what, little me? You can't. The axe no longer exists, nor any other weapon exists on this Wii. I wiped it all out from this console, I exclaimed. No, Edeled sighed. But, there's really no point in giving you any more pain. So my question... Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. I would like to remind everyone. Hold on. Hold on. I'd like to remind everyone that in the drawings, this seems a lot more dramatic. But from the perspective of Sam watching this, right? If these two are about to start fighting, it's going to be two dudes built like this just going... Like, bruh. <laughs> You're gonna tell me that shit's dramatic. It ain't dramatic, bro. It ain't, it ain't that serious, bro. Come on now. Come on now. It ain't, it ain't that serious. It ain't that serious, bro. Come on now. Come on now. So what you're seeing here is like in their head, bro. Though, this we will melt in the next half hour. So there's really no point in doing anything anymore, I concluded. Henry looked at me and said, Burn in hell. We were both Burn silent after that. I knew that I had completed the deed. <laughs> I was satisfied. The debt was done. <laughs> Sam picked me up and dragged me over to the delete icon. And deleted me. Bruh. Sam had successfully gotten rid of me. Once and for all. I only ended up falling. The tones of my body dipped backwards. My pupils dilated at this new, yet such familiar sight. Was I... Back in the void again? I wasn't wrong. The entire world had seemed to finally crash down on me. The walls collapsed, and the fall was endless. Unlike last time, a peculiar feeling entered me. I was senseless, helpless even, but I felt relieved. Everything had felt finally complete for me, Bruh. and this was something I had never felt before. I finally sensed what happiness feels like. I had left the world I was once in before, and entered the never-ending void. This was destined to be my fate, permanently. I am finally rid of the aggravation, the wounds which have slowly repressed, the scars that healed but were meant to bleed. All of the numbness I felt throughout my trial of life has been put at rest. Someday, 
somehow, in some way, I'd finally be able to understand the satisfaction of getting my vengeance to this world. It was never always going to be innumerable faults and despair. I finally got what I wanted, and what I wished for ever so much. I made Henry get what he deserved, and put myself at rest for the nightmare I lived, all thanks to him. My hurting lasted for long enough, and this retaliation was far overdue. It Bro. didn't seem to come to affect me, whether I'd be dragged into the dim pits of hell to eternally serve a sentence, or I'd be blessed and carried in arms to hear the anthem of angels at the gates of heaven and be forgiven for my sins. It all felt... complete. I finally tied up the loose knots and ends for myself. My name is, or was, Austin. I was granted the title of being considered human in that life. But, oh, how wrong they were about me. I used to hold the belief dearly to myself that I was against the entire world. I anticipated and feared that all would turn imprecise for me. I never thought that I'd be able to feel something that could bring me content, relief, and oh, so sad. happiness through that life. And yet again, I surprised myself. Or rather, the world can surprise me. I finally got to hold the emotions I've lingered for, desired for, begged and pleaded for throughout my entire life. Reprisal and recrimination for those who wronged me before finally came. I felt okay. I felt happiness. I finally found out what it felt like, knowing that I was able to make things right and make those who were against me agonize in their wounds for it. This was my life as Austin. This is the end of the road for me. And I got the ending I always wanted, to feel happy. And now, wherever this void takes me, I shall follow and keep falling. Farewell. And perhaps, maybe we can meet again in a new life. Until then, sayonara, Austin. Bro. Wow. What is this music? What is this music from? What is this? Is this Persona music or something? What is this music from? Why am I expecting to go? <laughs> no, you can't. You can't. No, 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 no. You can't use that as the outro music. No, 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 no. You can't use that as the outro music whenever I'm so used to hearing it. Ladies and gentlemen, thank you guys so much for watching the We Delete You series. There is more content to this series. That was just the main series. I think there's two other animatics that total up to about 20 minutes worth of content um, after that. And then also there's the April Fool's one that everyone is talking about. Um, so here's what we're going to do. Because this is going to end up being like an hour and a half long YouTube video. I'm going to stop it there. And this is going to go up on YouTube. And then if this video gets a ton of traction we'll check out the april fools video and then we'll check out the aftermath episodes as well uh, and that'll be like the that'll be like an additional part the reason we're watching this just a reminder is that we are watching it so that i understood the lore for versus edeled which here's the trailer that they showed at funkin forward uh if you guys missed the trailer or my reaction to the trailer um This is the trailer. Kyle. He does say Kyle. And this is set to release tomorrow night. Um, so the second that I have access to this and I'm allowed to stream it, 
we will be live streaming this. It might be an earlier stream tomorrow. I don't really know when it's going to come up. Um, but they did announce that it's coming out tomorrow. Also tomorrow, while I'm while I've got the YouTube audience, uh, Friday Night Funkin' Soft, which is a new like AU series, also drops. Uh, I'm actually supposed to get early access to it tonight at some point. So keep an eye out on my YouTube channel for that as well. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you guys in the next one. Love you all. Have yourselves a damn good one.